So let's have a look at strategic business growth improving cash flow. These are some fundamental strategic principles that any good business will have in place. And ask yourself the questions, have you got these things in place in your business? Do you do these things in your business? Okay, and I'm gonna break each one down. So, personal and business strategy, that's about goals, it's about where you're headed, how you're gonna get there. Systems and the E-Myth. Who's read a book called The E-Myth Revisited? Show of hands, okay. Please write it down now. If you've not read that book, it's a life changer. All right, if you wanna be serious about making money, having businesses, um, and doing it the right way from the beginning, um, it's a phenomenal book. I wish I'd read that book when I was 24 and I started my first business. Um, I read it about eight years ago, completely changed my perspective uh, on life, and I'll talk to you a bit more about that in a minute. Um, you need to have a business model. What is your business model? What does it look like? And I'm gonna show you a visual representation of what I think um, a property business should look like. So you can actually see it and picture it, um, and, and people find that quite helpful. Organizational chart. Now there might just be you in your business. You might be the CEO um, and the marketing director and the finance director and everything, but there are functions within a business, and I guarantee you some of those things you're gonna be really good at, and other things you're gonna be pretty weak at, all right? And being successful in business is about finding ways or finding people or finding strategies that can help you overcome the weaknesses because they are gonna be the things that hold you back, all right? Uh, there's an old saying, if you develop your weaknesses, you end up with a lot of well-developed weaknesses, okay? So the best thing I've found is work on your strengths and try and find other people who can help overcome your weaknesses, all right? Things you're bad at, you can find other people that are good at them. Monthly board meetings. How many of you have monthly board meetings in your property business? Two people, okay? Need to have them. Again, even if it's with you and you have to rope in a friend or a family member or somebody to, you know, to kind of interact with. Having a focus on a monthly basis on the different parts of your business is you know, fundamentally important. Why do you think all the big companies have board meetings? You know, and take minutes and take actions and they have departmental reports. There's fundamental reasons for it. It's sensible, you know, and it helps you keep track of where you're going. Otherwise, you just kind of get lost and get too tied up in the busyness. And then financial forecast. This is both personally and for your business. How many people, at least on a monthly basis, will track income, expenditure, profit and loss for your own personal lifestyle? Show of hands. Okay, about a quarter of the room. All right, if you don't do that, I guarantee you, you will not be successful, okay? It's one promise I can make to you. If you do not manage and measure money, you will never control it and you will never create it, all right? And, and we'll have a, have a bit of a reality check on that side of things a little bit later. It was a big block for me. You know, I went into business, I didn't do a lot of these things that I'm talking about. I've learned the hard way. I didn't do any financial forecasting. And then we ended up with a, a VAT bill that we didn't expect and a national insurance bill that we didn't e expect. All right? And these things sort of knock, they can knock you sideways. So numbers, business is a game, property is a game played by the numbers. If you have a weakness, that is one thing you do have to develop and you're going to have to find a way to overcome it. So we'll talk about that. Health warning at the bottom. You know, you all know this, it's common sense, but it amazes me how many people will rush in, you know, they spend half their life working to build up an, some investment capital or to pay down their mortgage just to then go to a, you know, come to an event like this or go to a property show and make very foolish decisions quickly afterwards on buying assets that cost hundreds of thousands of pounds and making mistakes and losing huge amounts of money. All right, so we're going to talk about due diligence, we're going to talk about going slowly. Uh, most of the speakers will inspire you and lift you up, and I hope I, I do that in part. But I also want to kind of put the brakes on a little bit and just make sure you engage the brain before you move too quickly. All right, because I find people either just rush in or they don't do anything. Yeah, and you need to have that balance. And in most relationships, you know, we work with a lot of our franchise partners, investment partners, a couple, married couples. And typically, you'll have the husband that's bullish and go for it, and yep, let's get on with it, and the wife that kind of wants to put the brakes on. And that creates a good balance. That's a dynamic tension that's useful. Sometimes it's the other way around. Okay? Um, who's lost £10,000 or more on business or property deals? Okay? Who's lost £100,000 or more? Two, P, three people. Who's lost a million pounds or more? One person. Okay? So... What I find is people that have lost money, 
tend to be more cautious because they've learned the bloody hard way. Okay? The credit crunch has cost me over a million pounds. Okay? And declines in my portfolio value, some high risk investments that I had, only a small, small percentage of my portfolio was high risk, but I lost a lot of money as a result of the credit crunch. Did I get wiped out? Did I even get close to being wiped out? No, I didn't, because I've got solid financial underpinnings that you'll, you'll learn about in a minute. Okay, so just do your proper due diligence. There's some phenomenal speakers. Um, Steve Foley's done a brilliant job of bringing some of the, you know, the leading people in the UK um, industry together over these three days. And you know, you're really um, sensible to be here, take advantage of them, okay? But all that glitters is not gold. And just make sure you do your due diligence on every company, on every property deal. And I'll give you some tips on that. Okay, so